hospital journey started in February of 2015. Due to complications with the pregnancy, our son was born seven weeks early at just over four pounds. Days later, after spending time in the special, special care nursery, we learned of his diagnosis of hydrocephalus. We are transferred to an absolutely amazing children's hospital in our downtown area. It is there that we have spent several weeks caring for and aiding him in the healing and growing process. Just last, last July, our then three-year-old endured his 10th brain surgery. In preparation for that surgery, I began to quilt him a hospital blanket, something to keep on his hospital bed to bring a little of home for comfort. In the recovery room, our surgeon was astounded at the thought that something homemade could provide so much comfort in an otherwise trying situation. It, it was, was there, there that, that Project Peanut, Peanut became a goal, goal here at Kia B. What an exciting opportunity we have to serve families in our area and um, share that opportunity with you all. Since I kind of posted on Instagram the sneak peek of what we were working on and we've mentioned it in just a couple of videos, y'all have really come out and asked how can we come alongside you? How can we help? How can we donate quilts or quilt blocks? And we are just, this, this uh, is blowing up into such an amazing, amazing opportunity. So what we've got for you today as a way to help us or as a way to donate to your own local children's hospital or just hospital in general, um, we are going to be able to share with you with the permission of Quilters Candy Box. Elizabeth over there is the pattern designer. She's phenomenal. She has come up with the cutest band-aid quilt pattern. Now she didn't know our story when she made this pattern. She came out with it just a few months ago, but I have since made some. I've reached out to her and said, hey, our followers really want to know how can they help us out in making these quilts for uh, Riley Children's Hospital. And um, so she has given me permission to do a tutorial on how to make one single Band-Aid. So I would love if y'all would just click the description down below. Um, you can click an arrow to kind of expand the description. We've listed her pattern in that um, description box. And we would love if you would head on over to her website purchase the pattern for yourself. This will give you all of the information that you need to finish a quilt, to make more, or to make different sizes. This quilt does come in three different sizes, a 53 by 56, a 53 by 67, and then also a mini quilt, which is just one single Band-Aid. So our goal here at Kia B is to actually make 53 by 56 inch quilts. And we're gonna make a couple of mini quilts as well. When our little guy started his hydrocephalus journey, he was in the NICU and a quilt of such size as 53 by 56 um, really would have just been way, way, way too much. They actually don't even allow blankets in the NICU. Um, but we could make a mini quilt and it's just one single Band-Aid and we could um, donate some of those as well. So we do plan to do some of that. So how does, how does this involve you? How can you get, um, how can you reach out and help? So we are going to actually list our PO box in the description box. If you feel led to make one single Band-Aid or quilt um, an entire quilt, we would love to donate those to our children's hospital. If you are so inclined to make one Band-Aid or several Band-Aids as a quilt, um, donate them to your own hospital or to your own children's hospital. It's such a blessing to be able to, to serve families in such a way. You all saw in that clip um, at the very beginning of this tutorial where um, I had actually made a quilt for our son in July before this pattern came out that says you are my sunshine. And I really do think it made all the difference. It brought a small piece of home into his hospital room as he recovered and it just kind of let him know that it's not it's not it doesn't have to be as scary and so um that is important to him to have such a small piece of home to take with him and so the fact that we can make these quilts and we can donate them and kind of serve families in that fashion um, is such an exciting opportunity for me so like i said we are going to list our p.o box down below so many of y'all have reached out and said how can we help you and that is this is for sure a way i'm happy to collect single band-aids and um, make whole quilts or mini quilts i'm happy to accept uh, full-size quilts or we can even put our paypal information 
in the description if you're like, you know what, I just have so many projects happening right now, but we would love to support you in doing this. Um, we will put our PayPal information down there as well. So without further ado, why don't you come in a little closer? We will discuss just what you need for today's tutorial and um, how exciting this pattern is. All right, here is the pattern that we're gonna be working with today. This is the Band-Aid quilt. It comes in three different sizes, 53 by 56, 53 by 67, and a mini quilt. I'm gonna be showing you today the tutorial for one single Band-Aid. And um, like I said, when you purchase the pattern, you will get the rest of the information to make an entire quilt or to finish your one Band-Aid into a mini quilt. So let's set this aside and we'll go through materials that you're gonna need. You obviously need a cutting mat, a sewing machine, um, a rotary co cutter. I just put a brand new endurance blade in this Ulfa cutter and I swear to you, I don't know how I used a rotary cutter without an endurance blade because it makes all the difference. I've just got my quilting ruler over here to slice up my fabric. For an entire quilt, um, you just wanna pick five or six of your favorite prints to go together. What I've done is I've gone to my favorite quilt shop that sells name brands, Moda, Riley Blake, tons of brands of fabric for $5 a yard. And I went and just picked out groups of five. It took me about two hours and the sweet ladies at that shop really helped me. And so we picked a lot of girl fabrics, a lot of boy fabrics, put them together in coordinating um, stacks and then I had them all cut in one yard increments so that I can just get several, several uh, band-aid quilts made out of them and then I've got them all bundled up here at home. So I just chose one that I really like and so I'm gonna be using these today. I'm gonna show you just one band-aid out of this really bright um, kind of lime mustard color here. So I've got five different colors because there are 10 band-aids in the quilt that we make uh, for the children's hospital. And then you're gonna want to pick a background color. Now, because this is pretty busy with the polka dots, I did choose a solid gray background. And so you're gonna want that. And then you're going to want some solid fabric for the heart center of your Band-Aid. Now what I did is I just happened to have a fat quarter bundle of solids laying around. And um, they were from a previous project that I actually did not even end up doing and so I had a bunch of them. And so I went ahead and just cut them all up into the dimensions I need. And that way as I'm working on a heart, um, I can just pull the fabric that matches that really well. The um, thing that I've kind of been trying to do in all of the quilts I'm making is one of the hearts is red. The others coordinate with the fabric, but one heart on the bottom right hand side is red. We are not labeling these quilts with our um, company name or anything like that. We are just making these one family to another. So I'm not labeling them. I'm just adding one single heart. Um, I just think that is something really special. Um, that I wanted to do. So I've got that ready to go so when I can just bust these out. So let's talk about your fabric dimensions. I'm gonna set these aside. Coordinating fabric is so fun. And so I had a really good time picking out all of that fabric. So for one single Band-Aid, your fabric A is going to be your Band-Aid fabric. And so here I've got two seven and a half inch squares and that's going to be considered fabric A for your Band-Aid fabric. Fabric B is whatever you choose your heart color to be. So today I'm gonna to be working with the red heart. So this will be the one red heart in this quilt. All the others will be blue and green, I'm sure. And these are two four by seven and a half inch rectangles. So you'll need two of those for fabric B. Now fabric C is two different dimensions, but they are out of your Band-Aid fabric. So whatever you've chosen for fabric A, fabric C will match that. You need two four inch squares. So that's kind of C1. Okay. And then C2, you are going to need four one and three eighths inch squares. So I've got those here. So you're going to set those aside. And then lastly, your fabric D is whatever you've chosen your background fabric to be for the quilt. I've chose this really nice Robert, Co Robert Kaufman gray color. And this is fabric D and you're gonna need four two and a half inch squares. Okay, so now that your fabric is all cut, let's go ahead and start assembling. We've got our fabric A, B, our two C fabrics, and then our fabric D. 
We are going to start with the heart first. So pull your fabric B. And we're going to start with that. And we are going to need your fabric C squares that are four inches. And you know that because they match the rectangles. So this is four and seven, four by seven and a half, and these are four inch squares. On the wrong side of the fabric C squares, you want to grab a fabric marker. We are just using these fabric markers that we got in a subscription box. And you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner all the way down this side on both of those fabric C four inch squares. Okay. And as you're looking at them, I like to do this with my um, fabrics side by side so that I make sure they're gonna go the right direction. You want both of those arrows, or I'm sorry, both of those corners facing inward. So you're gonna make the bottom of your heart. At this point, you are going to go and draw um, your line, and then you're going to stitch right on top of that and trim a quarter inch of a uh, quarter of an inch away. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab some pins and pin this. I like to pin because this is on the bias, so it will stretch just a tad. <clears throat> so I'm going to pin that, and then. So with a quarter, or I'm sorry, so straight on the line. Got that one. Now I'll take this one apart. Go ahead and pin here as well. trim a quarter of an in, a quarter of an inch away from that that sewn line this XX fabric here would make some great half square triangles so you could definitely sew a line down those really quick before you cut them and add them to your fabric stash okay so now we're going to gently press this open I'm sorry press this to the outside so I will set my seam And then I will roll these back. Because this is on the bias, you definitely want to be careful not to manipulate it too much. Just press and not iron. So we've got that one. Now we'll do the opposite direction. Okay, so we've got the bottom of our heart complete. Now we're going to take our small fabric C um, squares that are one and three eighths of an inch. And we are going to put two on each corner of our heart. So that's gonna make the outside and then the middle of our heart. So we're gonna do that just like this. And you are, just like we did with the bigger ones, you're going to draw a line from corner to corner, I'm sorry, corner to corner here, and then corner to corner here, and you're going to line those up. So I'll do that for you here. You're going to go over and saw and sew straight on those lines. Okay. 
and trim a quarter of an in, quarter of an inch away. I always have such a hard time saying that. And again, these would make great half square triangles to put in your stash for another project. And the quarter of an inch away doesn't have to be exact unless you're wanting to keep those. And these will press open just like this. And do you see how that's one side of our heart? So we'll press those. Now let's do the opposite side. So this is the left side of the heart. Now we're going to work on the right. We're going to put two more of those one and three eighths inch squares on either side, on both sides of this. and they're gonna be pointing in toward each other. So we will draw our lines and sew again. Our heart is ready and now we're just gonna flip this over. Now you wanna be sure to match your corners here because that is the center of the heart. So you wanna make sure that those go the right direction. You can trim up at this point if you've gotten just a little off. I like to throw a pin in right at this section here to make sure I'm going through both seams. There we go. And you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch down the center of the heart. We will set that seam and press. And I like to give the entire block just one more good press because we're going to be finished working on this right for this moment. And that makes the most darling little heart. So we're gonna set this aside for right now. And our next portion that we're going to be working on are the Band-Aid arms themselves. So we need our Fabric A squares, which are seven and a half inches, and we're gonna need our Fabric D. We are going to, on the sides of these, we're going to put a Fabric D on each corner of the outside of our band-aid. So here and here, and then the opposite on the other side. So you can imagine our heart will go here, and so we need on the opposite side. We're gonna draw lines from corner to corner once again, and dog ear these corners. This will kind of give it that band-aid shape. So take our ruler, Going to the outside of this one. Outside of that one. And then the same over here. This is what your Band-Aid arms should start to look like. Let me get it out of the way of the sewing machine there. So you have basically the same piece and we're just going to mirror image these. So these are both the same where we've got two dog-eared corners here with our fabric D squares. We're gonna flip those over and mirror those. 
And just to kind of show you, our heart is going to lay in the center right here to make our adorable, adorable Band-Aid. So where you should be at is still a seven and a half inch square because all we've done is just replace those corners. So now our next step is to um, attach these arms to the heart. So I'll do one at a time. Our left side goes with the dog-eared corners facing the left and our heart goes in the center. So I will line these up here and I will pin. And again, if you have gotten a little off, always trim away. Definitely line up yourself again. Okay, so our layer now is our left arm to the Band-Aid and our heart. We sew a quarter of an inch down the line. Open that up. So we've got this. Oh, it is turning out so cute. And then we're going to attach our right arm of the Band-Aid to the center heart square. And again, pin those. I do like to pin from the pieced side. So I will flip it over and I will pin and sew with that piece side facing upward. That's just personal preference. That is nothing you have to do at all. So sew a quarter of an inch away from And we can open that up and we can press our seams. Now there is no preference for me which directions the seam go, so I'm actually going to press them out towards the arms of the Band-Aid. And flip it over again just to make sure we've got a nice seam there. Now your Band-Aid should end up at 21 and a half by seven and a half. So that makes a good size little Band-Aid. I know um, I said earlier that we would be donating single um, Band-Aid mini quilts to the NICU and y'all these look so tiny to actually go to NICU babies. But our little peanut was born less than four pounds and this really would have been way bigger um, than he was. And so it seems tiny but these are actually the perfect size for a little NICU uh, baby. So let's zoom out so that you can see what a whole Band-Aid looks like and then I will give you um, a sneak peek of a, a lighter background Band-Aid quilt and a darker uh, background Band-Aid quilt and kind of show you our progress on those. Here is just our one Band-Aid and y'all see it took no time to put together. It was just a couple of pieces of scrap fabric um, that I had pre-planned so these weren't scraps but you could use scraps to make these band-aids and make it look uh, very scrappy. On some of the other quilts that I'm going to show you I chose to do the heart background in a coordinating fabric instead of the same as the band-aid and that was cute as well. And then your outside background fabric right here is really adorable. So when you purchase the pattern um, you will be able to make this into a mini quilt and then you'll be able to do the 53 by 56 and the 53 by 67 that comes with the, um, the pattern. So like I said, with Elizabeth's blessing, we wanted to share you, with you all how to make one single Band-Aid. Now what you do with that is you can um, take it to your local pediatrician's office um, if you choose to make full quilts out of them. You can take them to your local hospital or children's hospital and donate them there as well. Or you can send them to us and we can donate them on your behalf. We, um, I wanted to show you what it looks like as you are doing different backgrounds. Think outside the box and you don't even have to have a ton of anything. So here is a darker background. And like I said, I do like to do um, the one red heart in every single one of the quilts. We are not uh, labeling the quilts or anything like that. I just put that red heart there at the bottom. And so there it is there at the bottom. And so this is a darker background with the band-aids. And I did do the background of the heart the same as the band-aid arms. And so that's what that looks like. And they really pop out and they look so adorable all together. Now this is about 53 inches wide. And so it does, I mean, it's a big quilt. A child could definitely wrap up in that. And then here is a lighter background. Oops, I dropped it. 
Here is a lighter background quilt. Now these are just the tops. I haven't pressed, uh, starched or anything like that yet. And I haven't been able to quilt these just yet. But here is a lighter background. And so, um, you know, it just looks really different. And I did do these a little more scrappy. Um, and so that turned out really nice. And then there's our red heart there at the bottom. So we are calling this Project Peanut. Uh, because that just happens to be our little guy's nickname that my dad gave him when he was born. And so we are calling this Project Peanut. And if you would like to come alongside of us, um, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Let us know your plans with this pattern. Like I said, click in the link in the description box and you can head over to Quilter's Candy Box to get your very own pattern. Thank you all so much from the bottom of Tech Guy and I's heart. Um, Tech Guy and my heart. Um... We just appreciate so much that y'all want to get behind us and that y'all want to join with us in Project Peanut and donating some of these quilts. Um, thank you all again for joining us in the hive today. We are so excited to bring you this tutorial. And Elizabeth, thank you so much for making such an amazing pattern. It sews up so beautifully. And I know a lot of families are going to be very, very blessed um, by this wonderful quilting community. Thank y'all so much and you have a great day.